Honorable Minister of Finance informed Council that the budget support facility to state is also based on certain conditions as agreed under the fiscal responsibility plan. Nigerian governors commit $1 billion to the fight against insurgency. Commend the federal government for the success so far achieved. <laughs> President Mohamed Buhari is back home at the conclusion of One Planet Summit in Paris. Federal government reaffirms position on One China policy. It is against this factor that a special task force was set up to clear this factor. And as part of measures to decongest the courts, Court of Appeal is to establish mediation centers across the country. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on NTA Network News. I am Cyril Stober here in Abuja, and joining me from our Lagos Centre is Jennifer Igwe, and in Maiduguri we have Lami Ali. President Mohamed Buhari is back in Abuja after participating in the just concluded One Planet Summit in Paris, France, alongside more than 50 other world leaders. State House correspondent Adam Musambu reports on this and the last engagement by the Nigerian delegation in the European nation. President Muhammad Buhari, accompanied by the governors of Adamawa, Kanu, and Ondo states, returned to Abuja highly fulfilled, having significantly pushed for stronger financial support from the international community for, among others, the replenishment of Lake Chad, as well as the provision of clean energy for industrialization, job creation, and enhanced standard of living for the people. At the NMD Aziko International Airport to receive him were the Minister of the FCT, Muhammad Musa Bello, his Chief of Staff, Abbekari, the Deputy Inspector General of Police in charge of operations, Habila Joshak, and other senior government officials. Officers and soldiers of the Presidential Guards Brigade were also on hand to give the Nigerian leader a befitting welcome. <laughs> Before departing Paris, the Nigerian delegation to the One Planet Summit, comprising governors and members of the federal cabinet, engaged the French business class and the Nigerian community in France. Nigeria has top people who are very much interested in her progress. Right now, it's not about ethnicities, it's about Nigeria. Nigeria has to go forward. Nigeria is going to be a great nation, and we are all putting our best foot forward to see what we can do to take Niger to the next level, and the next level is a high level. The interactive session provided opportunity for the Nigerians in the diaspora and the various interest groups to be brought up to speed with the various revolutionary initiatives now yielding results in critical sectors of the Nigerian economy. The environment, they say, is now more than ever ready for business. I just want to give you some assurances that uh, is doing marvelously well in terms of security, which is very fundamental for whatever we do. Uh, Adamawa is very stable, very, very stable. Uh, we are still sleeping with both our eyes closed. We want to bring some investors to come to Adamawa because Adamawa is one of the very step. We have got more motivation to go back to our states and see how we can work with local communities to challenge the climate change. Desert that is far encroaching. It's irreversible if we have commitment. That commitment can come from social businesses. Not We will not just come to listen to what the summit is all about. We also have our in built plans at home that we will key into global events, see how we can be able to pick advantage we can gain by way of financing from the bigger <coughs> economies who are the major polluters to assist in building our economy. What is really needed now to implement a lot of the commitments that have been made uh, is funding. Uh, funding for adaptation uh, to um, you know, climate change and um, 
mitigation uh, of climate change. So the meeting uh, here really was um, to look at all the various possibilities uh, regarding funding. The participants were unanimous in applauding the Buhari administration for the restoration of hope and confidence not only in governance but indeed the future of Nigeria. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. In the meantime, Nigeria has reaffirmed its position on a one-China policy as part of government's drive to deepen bilateral relations with China. The federal government in a statement indicates the recognition of Beijing as the seat of government representing the whole of China, while Taiwan is an inalienable part of its territory. Consequently, the federal government does not recognize Taiwan as an independent territory. Nigerian governors have committed $1 billion to the fight against insurgency. The money is expected to be taken from the excess crude account. The chairman of Nigeria Governors Forum, Abdulaziz Yari, who announced this at the National Economic Council meeting in Abuja, said the governors are pleased with the success recorded so far. State House correspondent Jide Onifari has the details. Some of the issues considered included the taking of update from the forensic audit of revenue that accrued into the Federation account up to 2015. The Accountant General of the Federation also informed the Council that the balance in the Natural Resources Development Fund account as at 13th of December 2017 stands at 106.984 billion Naira. Balance in the excess crude account as at 13th of December stands at 2.317 billion dollars while stabilization fund account stands at 7.78 billion naira. Update on budget support facility loan granted to states was also reported to the council. The Honorable Minister of Finance informed council that the budget support facility to state is also based on certain conditions as agreed under the fiscal responsibility plan. But she complained that most states are yet to comply and added that non-compliance would make her ministry stop, stop any further support be given to any of the states that did not comply. Minister of Water Resources made a presentation to the council asking for urgent steps and action in the water sector in the country to overcome the challenges the ministry is facing in respect to water supply, sanitation and water gathering issues and with a view to improving the nation's chances of achieving the Sustainable Development Goals by the year 2030. Introducing a 12-month emergency plan beginning from the second quarter of 2018 to 2019, followed by a five-year recovery program uh, to last up to 2020. And then the whole plan is uh, contained within a 13-year revitalized strategy that will last to the year 2030. And the Minister for Petroleum Resources assured Council that within the next 48 hours, fuel supply will be restored nationwide. Apart from the $1 billion for security purposes, the Edo State Governor also informed the press of a planned retreat for secretaries to governments at state levels. This is in order to align the secretaries with what goes on at the national level. From the State House, Jide Onifade, NT News. Irregular migration has over time posed multiple challenges to countries of origin, transit and destination, as well as to migrants themselves from smuggling, slavery and exploitation. However, there are positive signals relating to regular migration where incomes and remittances are increased and countries grow and prosper. To this end, relevant authorities at a one-day seminar on checking illegal immigration in Africa discuss the way forward. Justin Bemui reports. Migration, be it regular or irregular, to Europe and other parts of the world is usually a sought-after option considered by those seeking greener pasture. When irregular, Records have shown ugly experiences, a disturbing development that has continued to raise concerns for discuss by key players in such a forum like this one, organized by doctors around the earth. They had divergent opinions on checking illegal migration, 
slavery and human trafficking in Africa. I think we have to take actions in a, uh, both in a short term and a long term perspective. And short term, I mean our objective has been to save lives. Even though they have individual regulation framework in their countries, there should be an international one that will provide for free and freer, free, fair flow of people to go out and work. One of the ways to cut this uh, immigration to Europe or to America is to teach people that they can do it here. And the government would have to, to make available resources to help, to help them jumpstart their businesses. We must all work together to ensure our youths and adolescents do not see Europe as the ultimate. Migration, they said, is not going to go away. The point remains getting the balance right, which means orderly flows of bringing out the good, reducing the bad, and avoiding the ugly consequences associated with migration. In Abuja, Justin Bemuni, NTA News. Turning to the judiciary now, the Court of Appeal is to establish mediation centers across the country as part of its efforts to decongest the courts and dispose appeals before it. This is part of the revelations at the commencement of the annual conference of justices of the Court of Appeal, which was declared open by the Chief Justice of Nigeria. Judiciary correspondent Femi Okewu reports. It will be interesting to see how this works out at the appellate level. But that it is being contemplated at all means that it is possible for a litigant who has pursued a case from the court of first instance to agree to a mediation program at the appellate court. President of the Court of Appeal announced this at the 2017 conference of the Justices of Court of Appeal. It is against this fact that a special task force was set up to clear this fact the rationale behind this initiative is for justices from less busy divisions to move to and sit over pending appeals in these year divisions. Chief Justice of Nigeria, who declared the conference opened, stressed the need for a higher level of commitment and integrity on the part of judicial officers across the country. Cautiously opening up the judiciary to the public helps to change the wrong perception people have of the activities of the courts. Where people are well informed, incidents of rumors, fake news, false allegations, petitions, etc., are reduced. The Nigerian judiciary is truly evolving into a new one. Soon after the formalities of the opening ceremony, the meeting went into an interactive session with the Chief Justice of Nigeria. And for the first time in a very long time that I know of, the press was not excluded from that interactive session, giving the media an opportunity to know firsthand some of the intricate things happening in the nation's judiciary. From the ceremonial court of the Court of Appeal, Abuja, Femi Okeowu, NTA News. And the Senate Committee on the Judiciary has commended the budget implementation of the judicial arm of government, saying it has met all its requirements for its expenditure. The committee chairman, Senator David Umaru, gave this indication while an oversight visit to the Federal Ministry of Justice and some agencies under the ministry. National Assembly correspondent Rabi Musa completes the report. Uh, from the projects we have actually visited uh, under the uh, judiciary, we find that um, very good utilization of the amounts released has been the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, gave the budget breakdown of over 6 billion naira appropriated to the ministry in the 2017 budget and commended a good working relationship between the executive and legislature towards restoring sanity in the system for prudent management of resources. The Minister of Justice, by virtue of its mandate, stands in advantage for the provision to articulate and implement the present administration's broad policy objectives being the anti-corruption, the recovery of the stolen national asset, the rule of law, component of the anti-terrorism war, and the institutionalization of law and order in all aspects. The National Agency for the Prohibition of Traffic in Persons, NAPTIP, Legal Aid Council, 
Nigerian Institute of Advanced Legal Studies, and the Regional Center for International Arbitration also explained their budget implementation to the committee. The personnel cost $1,427,253,996. The amount released was $1,099,974,700. Six million five hundred and seventy-seven, uh, one hundred and seventy-three million for the purchase of law books. The total that has been released is hundred and six million five hundred thousand eight hundred naira eighty-seven kobo. How is your service affected with this shortfall? Laptop needs to be given greater support. The committee promised to look into ways of improving the budget allocations of ministries and agencies under its purview. Rabbi Musa, NTA News. That will be more on National Assembly oversight functions later in the news when we link up with our legal studio. But still staying with the legislature, the bill for an act to provide for the establishment of the non-governmental organization's regulatory commission has been unanimously rejected by some stakeholders on the grounds that it will infringe on human rights as guaranteed by the Constitution of Nigeria and some international treaties. This was during a two-day public hearing organized by the House Committee on Civil Society Organizations and Development Partners. National Assembly correspondent Ifani Izumba reports. The bill, which passed through second reading, seeks to empower the Corporate Affairs Commission to at every two years renew or review the registration of non-governmental organizations and civil societies under the Companies and Allied Matters Act of 1992. The Speaker, House of Representatives, Yakubu Dogara, in a message emphasized that the role of civil societies cannot be overemphasized as they are always involved in matters of poverty reduction and other related issues. Thank you. CSOs are involved in diversity, they are involved in poverty reduction, human rights, anti environmental and domestic violence, anti corruption, HIV, AIDS, and other social, social political projects abroad. Stakeholders to add their views so that we can collate the information that comes from that and be guided in making recommendations to the House. I start with civil society very firmly. We have um, enough laws in this country. We're really not in short of laws, covering almost every dimension of our national life. Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, Center for Democracy and Development and Amnesty International, Nigeria, say the establishment of the regulatory commission is a duplication of existing laws. Evidence suggests that the balance of advantage lies in, in strengthening the existing regulations to these institutions instead of an obvious duplication. We look at all of the regulatory environment that guides operations of citizens in Nigeria. We know that there are adequate laws in the country today to guide the operation of citizens. While appreciating the National Assembly for passing people-friendly laws, stakeholders argue that this particular bill is not one of them. While strongly opposing the provision set out in it, they therefore recommend that it should not be passed into law. From the National Assembly, Ifani Izumba, NT News. And a beaten security now. Strategic and tactical commanders of the Air Force are in Bochi for the Maiden Special Operations Command Seminar. Defense correspondent Isaac Nkuma reports that the focus of the seminar is ending unconventional conflicts and security threats involving non-state actors. With 11 field units under age, the Special Operations Command is one of the newest formations of the Air Force responsible for special protection services and tackling new security threats. This seminar with theme, Employment of Nigerian Air Force Specialized Operations in Curbing Contemporary Security Challenge in Nigeria, seeks to appraise the command's performance in the last one year with regards to efficient and timely response in combating crimes across the country. Current security situation demands that the principle of economy of effort is applied in the most effective and efficient manner in all phases of Nigerian Air Force operations. Given the current security challenges, there is no auspicious time and now for stakeholders to drop minds on key issues. Unarguably, special operations could be described as critical 
to the success of any military operations, especially in counterinsurgency operations. Special forces are required to project force protection capabilities to conventional troops, both at the theater of operations and home bases. In this regard, there is a need for both strategic and tactical commanders to be in tune with the concept of special operations. Representative of the Chief of Air Staff and other senior officers had paid a courtesy visit to the Emir of Bauchi, Al Haji Rilwanu Adamu, who expressed optimism that the knot will be developed and insecurity will soon be a thing of the past considering the efforts of the military. In Bauchi, Isaac Unkuma, NTA News. In the meantime, the Nigerian army has resolved that all military operations must be within the context of global rules of engagement and human rights. This is contained in a communique at the end of the 2017 Chief of Army Staff Conference in Ibadan. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa has details. The annual event, Assembly of Army Principal Officers, Commanders, Heads of the Units and Formation provides a periodic platform for general review of operations and administrative activities in 2017. Projections for coming 2018 are made from lessons in the outgoing year. For enhanced national security, the Army says it will in 2018 apply the Official Secret Act. The Official Secret Act of, the, of 1962 was to be applied strictly in the conduct of future Nigerian Army operations. We have resolved that Nigerian Army will remain responsive and apolitical. Issues highlighted in the communique at the end of the conference include sustaining the investment in personnel management and the need for continuous self-assessment of its capabilities via ongoing operations. Appropriate and timely government funding of the Nanjan Army was identified as a requisite condition for prompt successes in the conduct of training and operations. The conference is with the theme reappraising Nigerian Army's operational efficiency in combating Contemporary security challenge from Aquata in Ibadan, Oyo State. Ismail Musa, NTA News. Still to come on the news, Africa's largest TV network, NTA, honors deserving staff. The details after this time out. an unfair advantage that puts you in front of everyone else. Be the first to have an immersive movie experience. 1000 Naira equals 4 gigabyte. That's 60 hours of video content. With the power to broadcast yourself, the world is your stage. 2,500 Naira equals 12.5 gigabytes that lets you upload 200 hours of dance videos. Join the data revolution, get the unfair advantage, powered by Glow Data Unmatched, and enjoy fast internet like never before. Dow Star 777 Hash. The largest data network, Glow, Grandmasters of Data. His humility, trustworthiness, patriotism, and love for the common man and him respect of ordinary Nigerians. Muhammadu Buhari, the people's president, an example of uprightness, doggedness, and a believer of true and progressive Nigeria. Three years down the line, Nigerians have seen commitment and performance in fulfillment of campaign promises. Peace is gradually returning to the ravaged Northeast, and the entire nation is reaping from it. The economy is being revitalized with special attention to agriculture and all the natural resources being fully explored to the fullest. The country is winning its war against corruption with looted funds being recovered to government coffers. Nigerians are saying, thank you, Baba. Carry on demand of the people. This message is from... 
go find where I go buy UTM uniform for Junior. You no need to rush. Go find where to buy UTM uniform because Jam don't locate them for inside your phone. Inside, inside phone. Jam don't begin sell 2018 UTM form from December 6, 2017, reach February 6, 2018. To register by form, text surname, first name plus middle name to 55019. Jam go send profile code. Now this profile code candidate go fill when he they pay for UTM form. Is they available for commercial and microfinance banks, mobile money operators? If you make mistake for your name, just text correct surname, first name, middle name to 55019. And if now your profile code you lost, just text resend to 55019. After payment, candidate go receive e pin. Now this e pin candidate go take go any accredited Jam CBT center to complete online registration. If you don't receive your e pin or you lose some, just text UTM e pin or the e pin to 55019 and Jam go send them back to you. Use your phone to buy your phone. Jam enhancing academic excellence. Can you see it? Thank you, honey, for being such a blessing to me and our family. Mama, happy old birthday, lovely day. Good always happens with Gino. The family's always happy with Gino. The times we have here, good moments we share. Gino truly. Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. Slavery is an evil practice abolished all over the world over 200 years ago. But today, human traffickers are selling human beings as slaves in Africa. It is your responsibility to make sure that you and the people you know do not fall into slavery. Don't believe fake promises of jobs abroad. People went to say Libya, Italy. Italy no use you. When they carry me on top of water, four days now they love me for inside house. No food, no water. I nearly die. Now God, when may heaven on earth, now save me. If you get one letter for Nigeria, you get junior one. You say you no get papa, you no get mama. Now make you come out. I beg go. God, they do farm work. You better pass best when enter road. Don't accept to travel to Europe through the Sahara Desert. You may be walking into slavery. Don't be a slave. This is a public service announcement. Brought to you by NTA. Thanks for staying with us. To improve on the quality and relevance of Nigerian universities in teaching, research and community service, the National Universities Commission and partners assembled academic publishers of junior and mid-career cadre from the north to train them. Rashida Mustafa Olagunju reports that the session featured the intercrasis and other important aspects of churning out high-quality academic journals that will attract worldwide recognition. This particular gathering is the first in a series of national authors' workshops as it is expected to be replicated across the country with the aim of enlightening and educating participants with requisite knowledge, skills, and instill confidence to produce quality journals that will advance global visibility of Nigerian universities and ultimately improves the nation's academic ranking in the world. So this is part of the efforts of the Commission. Uh, don't forget that we are a quality assurance agency and our modus operandi is not to inspect universities but to work with them to build capacity and work with them to ensure that quality uh, is improved on a daily basis in all ramifications. Uh, the challenge which most of these 
countries where English is not the first language, is that a lot of those people were, who do the research, which is very good, of very, very high quality, but it doesn't get published in journals which are primarily in English. That's what we are, we are trying to help. Apart from learning, the event is also expected to provide opportunity for the academia to network. Rashidat Mustafa Olagunju, NTA News. About 10,000 women and youths across the country have so far benefited from various skills acquisition programs of the Future Assured Initiative of the wife of the President, Aisha Mohamedou Buhari. Mrs. Buhari stated this at the graduation of 1,000 beneficiaries of the program in Bochi. State House correspondent Aliu Kabir reports. The 1,000 beneficiaries are drawn from across the 20 local government areas of Bauchi State, comprising women and youth. They were trained in various skills acquisition programs ranging from food processing, such as local spaghetti and couscous, tie and dye, beautification of both the body and the face, as well as gelly and head tie. Others are body perfumes, car and air fresheners, baking pasties and braid and insecticide. Presenting the certificates to the beneficiaries, the wife of the president called on them to use the opportunity given to them to empower themselves and others in order to make their lives better. She presented a token to enable them to start up their businesses. I am glad to know that you have already started making use of the skills acquired. This means that you can now solve your immediate financial problems with confidence. I also wish to call on leaders, both political and corporate bodies, to assist these graduating beneficiaries with startup funds so that they can stand on their feet. The governor of the state, Muhammad Abubakar, and his wife, Hadiza, and other speakers applauded the initiative of the wife of the president through her future short program and assured her of their full support at all time. On behalf of myself, the good people of Bobchi State, the beneficiaries of this program, we want to thank her most sincerely for coming to uplift the living standards of women and youth in Bobchi State. However, like Oliver Twist, though you have done much, we will continue to ask for more wherever resources permit through your NGO Future Assured. The beneficiaries expressed their happiness with the gesture seen. The rigorous training and knowledge they have acquired will enable them to stand firm on their feet and promise to extend the gesture to the wider society. The wife of the president paid a visit to the palace of the Emir of Bauchi, Al Hajir Luan Suleiman Adamu, intimated him about her visit and seeks for his support and prayers. The Emir reassured the wife of the president of his continued support to enable her to discharge her responsibility as the mother of the nation. In Bauchi, Ali Kabir, NTA News. The Director General of NTA, Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, says unionism is not all about confrontation but an avenue for unionists to add value to the organization and the society. He was speaking at the Staff Day celebration of NTA in Abuja. Joseph Orok has the details. As the year gradually comes to an end, individuals, groups, and organizations are reflecting and projecting for next year. This is the case as the Nigerian television chapter of radio and television arts workers, Ratawo, gathers staff and top management for its 2017 Staff Day celebration in Abuja. Appreciating Ratawo for the gesture, the Director General emphasized the need for discipline and punctuality to work as management has taken welfare of staff as a major priority. You cannot make any progress in an atmosphere of a discipline. Both the management and the two house unions, the town and NUG, have the responsibility to make sure that discipline reigns supreme. Because without it, you can't go anywhere. Celebrating our staff, to me, is the beginning of a new and greater NTA. The event provided opportunity for discussions on safety in the workplace and the role of staff 
in proper management of the organization's finance. Because in NTA, we come out with strict safety conditions. And it is in line with what is in the international conventions and the labor laws of industrial safety. The management motivates the staff and the staff motivates the management. And uh, if you are able to, to control and monitor your resources very well, you'll be able to achieve your organizational goals and objectives. Staff and guests were presented with award of excellence. Among the recipients is the governor of Nasarawa State, Tanku Almakura, who was represented. Nasarawa State will continue to partner with NTA. The hard work, dedication, I work 24 hours, no Saturday, no Sunday, no Christmas. I know I deserve it. The staff day celebration which afforded NTA workers the opportunity to interact is the first ever of such events organized by Ratao. Joseph Orok, NTA News. The job's just got to be done. Congratulations to the winners. The Nigerian Communications Commission has reiterated its commitment to continually upgrade its programs aimed at empowering and protecting telecommunication consumers. This was a commitment by the Executive Vice Chairman of the Commission, Professor Umar Ramatta, at the 82nd edition of the Telecom Consumer Parliament in Abuja. Olajide Bello has details. In addition to Universal Bill of Rights, telecoms companies operating in Nigeria are obliged under the Consumer Code of Practice Regulations 2007 to provide information on products and services that is accurate and in clear language. While consumers must be bound by operations terms of service and return of the signed service agreement. To strike a balance between both parties, the Nigerian Communications Commission considers it necessary to create a feedback mechanism platform. It is therefore necessary for the Commission to find a balance, ladies and gentlemen, between enabling the opportunities that the bars providers offer to some consumers while at the same time mitigating the challenges or inconvenience they could constitute to other consumers. It is my hope that the outcome of the discussions and the resolutions reached here today will enrich the industry, deepen understanding of the peculiar issues involved in the operations and delivery of value-added services in the Nigerian telecom industry. There are so many things that we have been able to bring up. The issue of unsolicited messages have been hardly reduced. By and large, the data usage and uh, internet usage have really improved. I think uh, there is a lot of improvement for the year 2017. The theme, which is value-added service and its benefits, was carefully chosen to underscore the importance and excitement in the market, as well as spice up consumer quality of experience in the industry. In Abuja, Olajide, Bello, NTA News. The police in Ogun State has arrested the middle-aged man who allegedly strangled a youth corps member in the state. Correspondent Hakim Jimo reports that the Commissioner of Police, Ahmed Ilyasu, who led journalists to the scene of a crime in Odeda local government area, said the suspect had confessed to the crime. When 23-year-old Modupe Tawoshe, an indigenous of Oyo State, was posted to Ogun State for her national youth service, little did she know that she will not leave to complete a service year. 29-year-old Festus Udo, who hailed from Uromi in Edo State, decided to cut short the life of the core member by strangulating her after raping her in a bush. Festus, who was said to be a tutor in a driving school in the metropolis, deceived Modupe, a student, that her learner permit was ready, allegedly dragged her to the bush. After I have sex with her, she now told me she will, she will go and tell that they are, her, they are family. As she said she wanted her family, so the clothes went wear the shirt and I tear the clothes and I tie her neck. Luck eventually ran out of Festus when men and officers of the Ogun State Police Command swung into action and arrested the suspect. Well, we had some, so we had some traces. Okay. The passports of these uh, um, suspects, the, the, and some other apparels 
of the of the deceased were found at the scene were able to uncover uh, his this nefarious um, act. While calling on the public to avoid people they do not know very well, the Commissioner of Police stated that the command will continue to get rid of crime and criminality in the society. Lagos, the Center of Excellence, is our first stop on Network News tonight. Jennifer, let's get more about legislative, legislative oversight of some parastatals there. Thank you, Cyril. Good evening and a warm welcome to Lagos. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, has advised media practitioners to abide by the ethics of the profession in the discharge of their duties. He gave this advice at the 27th Nigeria Media Merit Award in Lagos. Annie Daniels has the details. The 2017 Nigeria Media Merit Award is the 27th in the series. The aim of the award is to honor media practitioners who have performed excellently in their field of endeavor. Channels Television emerged the best television station of the year. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, and joint media practitioners to join hands with the present administration in the fight against corruption and uphold the ethics of the profession. He advised practitioners to always ascertain their facts before publishing their stories, adding that journalists must maintain high sense of responsibility and integrity. Also, you need an opportunity to appeal to the media to join us in rebuilding this new Nigeria. Uh, if media cannot afford to sit on the fence, one of the most difficult things is to change the way people behave. Uh, we have embarked on change. It's not just change, you know, uh, you know, by word of mouth, but change in the way we do things. Other guests, including representative of the Lagos State Governor, Akin Wumi Ambode, noted that an award like this is needed to spur journalists to greater heights. Awards were also presented to several other journalists and media organizations in various award categories. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. I won the Nigeria Media Merit Award Reporter of the Year in 2013. Now, members of the House of Representatives Committee of Information, Ethics and Values have expressed displeasure over the obsolete and deplorable state of facilities at the federal government printing press in Lagos. This was during a tour of the federal government-owned media organization led by its chairman, Olushegun Odebumi, Abola de Salami reports. As expected facilities at the production unit, the library and the store where they observed that most of the equipment were dilapidated and obsolete. Apart from being out of use for a long time, the committee members expressed displeasure on the level of infrastructure decay, which they believe requires urgent attention. But coming here it added to my sadness. I think there, there, something is lacking. Though we really know we, we need fund, but if government can have proper fund and release fund, <coughs> you cannot utilize it. And for you can see that equipment here are old, absolute, and cannot be used effectively to meet up and compete with other uh, equipment used by other competitors in the printed industry. However, the story was different at the NTA Lagos Network Center, as the committee members observed that most of the equipment were in good condition and assurance to ensure that the broadcast organization is well repositioned. Uh, well, I am happy that. Um, we went to some places where we have seen improvement on the conditions of uh, those establishments uh, from what we saw last year. You already know we have some digital equipment in place, but the House Committee has come, they have seen, and um, we're just hoping that they will do what is best for us. The committee members thereafter visited the Broadcasting Academy where they charged members of staff to intensify efforts towards rebuilding the institution to an international standard. In Lagos, Abola de Salami, NTA News. You're still watching NTA Network News. Time for a commercial break. The news will continue shortly with Cyril in Abuja. Please stay tuned. <laughs>
This is your playground. Get free 200,000 Naira preloaded on the new Jumbo Sim. Yes, 200,000 Naira. It's massive. Now every Sim is a Jumbo Sim. Get it. Use it. Flaunt it. The largest data network. Glow. Grandmasters of data. This must be one of Mother Nature's greatest gifts. But there's something else it gives us. When we see such beauty, we want to share it with those we love. That's what LG wants you to see. Just what we see now, through our technology. LG OLED TV. <laughs> Get 10 times your recharge value to call and browse anyhow. Recharge with star 220 star the pin hash to enjoy this offer. Available to new and existing subscribers. Mr. Anansa, I'm in Badua. I want Polo Waja. I want to go to Wakawa Badua. I don't know. Show me what you're talking fellow me. I want my sim. Airtel, the smartphone network. It's that time of the year when we appreciate all those that mean so much to us. Our sponsors, our clients, government at all levels, corporate bodies, advertisers, religious bodies, civil society groups, political parties, businesses, and above all, you, our esteemed viewers. Together, we made 2017 great. Together, we shall make 2018 even greater. That's why we say thank you, Merry Christmas, and a prosperous New Year. Some business now. Nigeria's mining sector raises revenue profile to 3 billion naira at the end of 2017. Details with Muplang Dako on Business News. <laughs> Hello there, thank you for joining us. The mining sector has raised the nation's revenue profile from 600 million naira to 3 billion naira at the end of 2017 since the approval of the mining roadmap 18 months ago. Chairman of the Mining Implementation and Strategy Team, Professor Benga Okunlola, who made this known, pointed out that the mining roadmap for mining would increase the current gross domestic product GDP of the country. In line with the Economic Recovery Growth Plan, ERGP, of the federal government, the head of civil service of the Federation, Winifred Oyoita, said the service is being fully digitized to save costs. If followed religiously, is expected to deliver as much as 120 billion Naira savings from cleaning out the human resource data on the IPs. We also expect to save as much as 2.5 billion Naira on digitizing the content of our processes here. There will be a lot of savings on uh, materials, on stationery, on communications, and so on. And now for a look at how equities on the Nigerian Stock Exchange fared Thursday. That's the package. I am Muplang Dakok. Thank you, Muplang. The new theater commander of Operation Lafia Dole visits units under the command in Maiduguri. Let's join Lami for details. Lami. Hello, Cyril. Glad to have you join us in Maiduguri. The new theatre commander Operation Lafia Doli, Major General Rogers Nicholas, says the welfare of troops in the front line is critical to his agenda towards boosting their morale and clearing the remnants of Boko Haram terrorists. 
Major General Rogers Nicholas stated this while on operational visit to units under the Theta Command in mid-degree. Abakar Mohamed Musa has the details. The theater commander Operation Lafia Doli, Major General Rogers Nicholas, while saluting troops in the front line for their determination and doggedness at reducing the activities of Boko Haram insurgents to the barest minimum in the Northeast, however, called for more robust offensive operations in flushing out the dreaded sectarian group. He informed them that defeating the terrorist group is sacrosanct as both the national and international communities are expecting far reaching results from troops in the theater. This war cannot be left with the Nigerian military alone. It's not a war where you said it's military and the insurgents. It's a comprehensive thing that has to be done totally. Everybody should come out and support what we're doing. It's important in terms of any information you have, anything you can do to support is, is welcome. Major General Rogers Nicholas has commiserated with wounded military personnel who are receiving treatment at the 7th Division Medical Services and Hospital where he assured them of improved welfare. In Meduguri, Abu Bakr Mohammed Musa, NT News. Towards ensuring satisfactory service delivery in hospitals across the state and having a first hand knowledge of areas needing intervention, Governor Kashim Shatima paid an unscheduled visit to IEA and dental hospitals in Meduguri, the state capital. Haman Jabani has the report. During the visit, the governor attended a surgery session after which he was briefed by the medical director of the high hospital, Dr. Falmat Kari, on the general affairs and challenges faced by the hospital. He also sought to know the actual needs, especially in the aspect of manpower, having equipped the hospital with state-of-art facilities and directed a submission of the hospital's request immediately. The medical director thanked the governor for the visit and informed him that the hospital lacked the needed manpower to provide the required healthcare services to the people as the hospital is overstretched by the large number of patients attended to on a daily basis. At the dental session, the governor also directed for submission of a comprehensive list of areas of intervention, assuring that government will accord priority to the needs of healthcare institutions. In May degree, Hamman Jabani, NTA News. And those are the reports from Meduk Reads back to Cyril in Abuja. Have a very good evening. Thank you, Lami. Time for another quick break. Stay with us. The time has come for Nigeria to take her rightful place in world sports with the first national grassroots sports festival to discover and prepare sport talents and develop future world champions for Nigeria. The festival date is 3rd to 10th March 2018. The venue is the National Stadium Abuja, packages A and B. This is the opportunity for you to promote your brand through the festival. For broadcast sponsorship, which include live broadcasts, highlight shows, and TV fans show, contact the chairman, chief coordinator, Angelo Peter I. Elosia, or Nick Oyushi. Organizers, Grassroots International Sports Academy and LOP Worldwide Television, endorsed by the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development. Broadcast Partner, NTA. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, is working to ensure access to safe, good quality essential medicines with the World Health Organization pre-qualification of Made in Nigeria pharmaceutical products, stiffer penalties for fake drug offenders with a review of NAVDAC laws. National, regional, and international collaborations, cutting-edge technologies, including the mobile authentication service. For the last 24 years, NAVDAC has made steady progress in ensuring that the health of the nation is protected. Our collective responsibility is eliminating substandard, falsified and unsafe drugs, medical devices, foods and water. I urge all Nigerians to support NAVDAC in safeguarding our health. God bless Nigeria. Let us support NAVDAC to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAVDAC, safeguarding the health of the nation. A bit of sport now with Tabara Ibiwe. Wild basketball.